The following video will be assessing Addis Ababa's vulnerabilities in light of climate change and their readiness to adapt to future climate change impacts. Using the stabilization wedges, we will assess the country's climate resilience green economy strategy in order to determine whether they have effective and efficient potential measures to lower their carbon emissions and transition into a sustainable city. Climate change refers to the long-term changes in the climate caused either by natural occurrences or human activities. Natural occurrences include changes in solar energy, volcanic eruptions, and natural changes in greenhouse gas concentration, while human activities include greenhouse gas emissions, waste production, and the destruction of natural environments, for example through deforestation. As a result, the global climate is warming as observed by increases in air and ocean temperatures, increased ice and snow melt, and a rise in sea levels. In turn, climate change affects the spheres in which people exist. Immediate impacts are observed environmentally with increases in desertification, drought, floods, shifts in arable land, and stresses on water supplies. As natural resources are depleted, Populations face increasing challenges as a result of conflicts over land and migration to urban areas which leads to increased urbanization. Economies are impacted as agriculture faces greater challenges and marine resources are depleted. This has a great effect on food, health and energy securities. In turn, these manifest into increased social and political instability that hinders a nation's ability to implement measures of adaptation to future effects of climate change. Ethiopia is an underdeveloped and impoverished country situated in Eastern Africa, with its capital Addis Ababa located in the center of the country. Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa with a population size of approximately 96 million people. With a current growth rate of 3.18%, the population is predicted to increase to 145 million people by 2050. In Addis Ababa, the population is predicted to increase from 3.4 million to 8 million people by 2020. The ND Gain Index assesses a country's vulnerability to climate change against its readiness to adapt and be resilient. Ethiopia ranks 145 on Indigain with a vulnerability score of 0.553 and a readiness score of 0.330. The high vulnerability and low readiness of Ethiopia indicates a great urgency for action and a great need for investments and innovations to improve their readiness and decrease their vulnerability. Vulnerability to climate change is found to be highest in developing countries, yet these same countries have contributed very little to greenhouse gas emissions that have brought about global warming. Ethiopia's total carbon dioxide emissions make up 150 metric tons, which is less than 0.3% of the global emissions. The high vulnerability of these countries is due to a high reliance on agriculture to support their basic needs, livelihoods and exports, and a low adaptive capacity which is caused by high levels of poverty and the lack of access to adequate education, healthcare, information communication technology and infrastructure. At present, the majority of its citizens are employed in agriculture as rural farmers. Agricultural productivity is limited though, as less than 1% of smallholder farmers use irrigation, whilst others rely on traditional practices to raise livestock and crops, relying upon rainfall and relocating with the seasons. However, climate change has already altered these practices as fresh water resources decrease, desertification spreads and productive cropland shrinks. The rapid population growth is one of the leading causes of the country's many problems. Poverty remains widespread in Ethiopia, with 30% of population being poor. Climate change is also leading to increases in food insecurity, and malnutrition remains a major problem with 35% of children being underweight and 14% being severely underweight. Due to widespread urban poverty and strained municipal services, urban areas like Addis Ababa are also being affected by malnutrition. Healthcare is extremely strained as outbreak of diseases has become more common due to temperature increases that facilitate the spread of insects carrying disease. Further impacts include degradation to land through droughts and heavy rainfalls and causing floods which damage infrastructures.
Ethiopia still has relatively low rates of access to sanitation, where only 34% of the population has access to pipe water, only 23% of the population has access to electricity, and challenges remain around investment in the health, safety and education of women and girls. As challenges increase, rural farmers abandon their traditional livelihoods and move to urban areas in search of alternative means of survival. But once there, they face high unemployment and a system that is already strained by rural urban migration. As a result, the built-up areas are projected to expand into undeveloped zones on the periphery, decreasing green space. Although rural to urban migration has been significant, less than 20% of the population currently lives in urban areas, largely focused in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is vulnerable due to its poor social and physical infrastructure systems, such as overcrowding and improper waste disposal, and the lack of housing infrastructure makes living hard for inhabitants. Most of the water resources for everyday living comes from the city's rivers, which are impacted by point and non-point sources of pollution. Due to the poor waste disposal infrastructure and the inaccessibility of public toilets, inhabitants are forced to turn to these rivers for sanitation services. The lack of education and public awareness has resulted in a huge disconnect between urban residents and the environment as there is limited concern for the wider environmental issues. Education and raising of public awareness is therefore very important in order to get individuals to start making changes towards a cleaner lifestyle. Addis Ababa contributes 4.8 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions, making up 13.4% of the country's total emissions. The emissions stem from the following activities. Transportation makes up 47%, where motor vehicles including gasoline and diesel-powered cars, trucks, taxis and buses pump roughly 1.4 million tons of carbon dioxide into the city's air annually and account for 29% of Addis Ababa's carbon footprint. 35%, consisting of 1.3 million tons of carbon dioxide, come from stationary energy in residential, commercial and institutional, energy and manufacturing industries and construction, where buildings and operations use private off-grid power generators, and the usage of kerosene, charcoal, wood and furnace oil for domestic cooking is high. Waste disposal produces 13% of the emissions through inadequate disposal of organic and biological waste, as well as plastics, paper, glass and metal to name a few. The remaining 6% is created by agriculture and forestry. In agriculture, livestock produces methane and nitrous oxide emissions. Impacts of human activities on forestry include deforestation for agricultural land and forest degradation caused by domestic consumption of fuel wood which reduces the country's carbon stocks. There is a lack of diversification of the economy where agriculture accounts for 47% of the national GDP. It makes up 90% of exports and 83% of employment. Since agriculture is usually affected by climate change, this in turn will have major impacts on the economy and employment security. The government of Ethiopia has not been effectively developed as little remains of democracy since the passage of laws that repress political opposition, tighten control of civil society and suppress independent media, which expresses high social inequality within the country. Economic growth has reduced the percentage of the population living in poverty by 33% since 2000, but per capita income remains among the world's lowest and many young people leave the country to seek opportunity elsewhere. Corruption remains a significant problem, therefore a weak rule of law and lack of effective implementation undermine policies and initiatives aimed at promoting open markets and alleviating poverty. They have a low national literacy rate of 47%, and 50% of the population lack access to education. In comparison, Addis Ababa's literacy rates are high at 87%. The number of people with access to information communication technologies in 2015 was 3.7 million people or 3.7% of the total population. Before sustainable policies and strategies can be effectively implemented, the government needs to be reformed and poverty alleviation needs to be addressed further. The stabilization wages is a concept used to look at climate change mitigation scenarios. The objective is to stabilize carbon concentrations under 500 parts per million for the next 50 years in order to avoid dramatic climate change. This is done by using wages from a variety of different strategies which fit into the stabilization triangle. We will now use these wages in relation to Ethiopia's climate resilient green economy strategy. 
Ethiopia's climate agenda is implemented through the Climate Resilient Green Economy Strategy drafted in 2011 by the government. The vision is for Ethiopia to develop a climate resilient green economy, limit the national greenhouse gas emission levels to 150 metric tons over the next 15 years, and to attain middle income status by 2025. The country plans to follow a green economy pathway that fosters sustainable development. The Climate Resilient Green Economy Strategy is based on four pillars – agriculture, forestry, power, transport and industrial sectors and infrastructure. Ethiopia plans to deploy renewable and clean power generation. They will use hydropower, wind power and geothermal power as sources of energy to create near-zero greenhouse gas emission electric power supply by 2030. They already have two hydropower dams, three wind farms and the first geothermal power plant is under construction. These three sources of renewable and clean energy will make up three wedges. Ethiopia plans to use appropriate and advanced technologies in transport, industry and buildings. In transport, the use of new technologies offers a reduction potential of up to 13.2 metric tons of carbon emissions in 2030. Improving Addis Ababa's public transit includes the recent introduction of the light rails transit system, which began carrying passengers in September 2015 along a 16km track linking the city's northern and southern suburbs to the central city. Other transport strategies include a bus rapid transit system, improving vehicle efficiency by applying fuel efficiency standards, promoting clean fuel blends of biodiesel and ethanol, adopting hybrid and plug-in electric vehicles, and shifting freight transport from road to an electric rail network. If Ethiopia can encourage its people to make use of public transport and the light rail, and to switch to fuel efficient vehicles, it would add two more wages in the form of increased transport efficiency and reducing miles tra travel. In industry, five subsectors comprise 12 individual industries that make up the major part of Ethiopia's industrial activities. These include cement, textile and leather, steel and engineering, chemicals, paper and pulp and food processing, and mining. Efficiency strategies adopted within these activities will have a reduction potential of 22 metric tons of carbon emissions in 2030. To reduce emissions, energy efficiency such as recovering waste heat, improving insulation, and use of cogeneration will be implemented, as well as alternative fuel switching from coal to biomass or biofuels or electricity alternative production processes, and carbon capture and supply to other industries which use carbon as an input into their production process. Four more wages in the form of fuel switching, biofuels, fossil-based electricity with carbon capture and storage, and increased building efficiency will be produced. In infrastructure, adopting new technologies in lighting and waste management offers a potential reduction of 6.9 metric tons of carbon emissions in 2030. Strategies include reducing electricity demand through the use of more efficient lighting technology such as high efficiency fluorescence and improving landfill gas management and liquid waste emissions management to capture gas for flaring. This will constitute another wedge in the form of increased efficiency of electricity production. Ethiopia plans to increase greenhouse gas sequestration in forestry by protecting and re-establishing forests for the economic and ecosystem services as carbon stocks. Through afforestation and reforestation, a potential reduction of 131 metric tons of carbon emissions can be achieved by 2030. Reduction strategies are grouped into number 1. Reducing deforestation. This is done by lowering the pressure exerted on forests by the need for agricultural land by creating new agricultural land from non-forested areas through large and small-scale irrigation. Number two, reducing forest irrigation by reducing the demand for fuel wood by offering a range of efficient alternatives for cooking and baking, such as fuel-efficient stoves and fuel shift stoves in the form of biogas and electric stoves. And number three, increasing sequestration or carbon stocks, mainly through large and small-scale afforestation and reforestation or area closures and forest management of woodlands and forests to cover an area of 7 million hectares in total by 2030.
Today, several projects to increase forest cover through afforestation and reforestation are already ongoing, such as in Tigre, where over 224,000 hectares of land has been restored. In addition, sustainable agroecology, where crops and trees are grown together on the same pieces of land, are also potential levers to increase carbon sequestration, that is, carbon capture and long-term storage. This will form a wedge for forest storage. Through adoption of agricultural and land use efficiency measures, Ethiopia plans a potential reduction of 78 metric tons of carbon emissions in 2030. This will be achieved through enhancing lower emitting techniques for agriculture such as agronomic soil practices to increase carbon storage, optimal nutrient management to improve nitrogen use efficiency, effective tillage and residue management practices, terracing and other water harvesting techniques, and agroforestry practices to prevent soil erosion and degradation. Also through enhancing yield increasing techniques for agriculture, farmers could dramatically increase crop yields by using improved drought and flood resistant seeds and basic low cost irrigation systems, increasing the use of manure as fertilizer and adopting agronomic practices, creating new agricultural land in added areas through large and small scale irrigation schemes can reduce emissions from the expansion of cropland and destruction of forests. This will form another wedge for soil storage. In conclusion, Ethiopia's climate resilient green economy strategy has the potential to implement 12 stabilization wedges working towards carbon emission reductions and avoiding dramatic climate change. However, the country still has a long way to go before they can reach 100% green economic efficiency, with poverty and an inadequate government being the biggest factors which stop the country from moving towards their goals faster. If poverty can be eradicated completely and the government reformed, Addis Ababa's vision of a sustainable transition can be realized.